Good morning, everyone. Yeah, uh, the title of uh, this summit, Solving the Business Problems, is actually very relevant for what we were facing in our company. Um, I wouldn't call it problems in our case, I would call it opportunities and challenges. Uh, and what I would like to share with you today is how we took on these challenges by engaging heavily with IT people and SAP people. Um, a little bit about the company for many, many of you, probably Solar is nothing what you can articulate to. Solar is a technical wholesaler. Uh, that means we buy goods and we sell it, and in the meantime, we store it in center warehouses. So we got no production, we got lots of salespeople and administration. We have uh, our main focus areas is in the electrical, HWS, and in the ventilation. We are uh, currently operating in seven countries. Uh, there will come more during this year due to acquisitions. Right now, we are dealing with 156 drive-ins. That means uh, spots where customers can go and buy our products. We have a concept at Solar where we offer our customers they can order goods until 6 o'clock in the evening, and they get it no later than 7 o'clock in the morning. So working with Lean in Solar is like trying to change the tire on a Formula One car while it's driving. So that's the interesting part about it. Um, before we go into the SAP part, I would like to, to give you a little bit of the picture of our journey so far and the thoughts we had because that is very brought into the approach towards SAP. When we're talking lean in solar, we're saying that lean for us is about implementing a system, a way of doing things. So this means that what we did in the beginning was set up a program that fitted to solar, to the needs of solar, and not just trying to copy something we've seen anywhere else. We really looked at what the business, what does the business needs, and how can we help the business. So we established a program that was tailor-made for this current business. For us also, working with Lean is about creating a new management form, we also yesterday talked a lot, heard a lot about the management system. We're currently working on it. We've got some great learning so far. And the other great thing is it spans the whole company. So it was that the sales force couldn't say, yeah, you can do lean any way you want, but don't go into sales because we're different. I think a lot of you have heard that about the sales people before. But nevertheless, this was a decision that we would go into all areas of the business. We would also like to change, influence the existing color, uh, culture in the business with the respect to the existing, but we would like to add something to, to get it more in a lean way. Um, what we've been, I've been using Dan quite a lot. Um, the great thing is I come to Dan with a lot of questions and the only thing I'm getting is a lot of questions from him. So uh, really, having a great talk from time to time about the issues that we are dealing with. When we're communicating about our lean program, our way of seeing lean, we use this figure, this house. And I now know a lot of you will probably sit and say, yeah, just another lean house. You're right. But this is our lean house. This is the house that our employees, my colleagues, can relate to, and when we're talking about lean, they can see exactly where we are, what we're dealing with, and what we need to focus on. This house, we've then decided to take into the SAP world, because it works in the company, then we need to make sure that the SAP people, our IT people also get an understanding about how this house works, what does it mean. So the main question in the beginning is actually why involve in an SAP project? In Solar, we call the SAP project Solar 8000. It's related to the uh, challenge that uh, mountain climbers have to challenge uh, all the mountains in the world above 8000. So there is a club of people who have done all the different mountains, and this was very similar to the implementation we were in front where we had to climb a lot of mountains. 
So Sol 8000 equally to SAP. So the reason for doing this is, first of all, to ensure that an SAP implementation is not an IT project. It's a business development project. Business development means the business has to participate. Unfortunately, I've seen too many examples where the IT has run the SAP implementation and the business has been sitting on the sideline just watching and waiting for them to be finished. Also that we need to unite the SAP system and the lean thinking. A lot of lean people, when they hear the name SAP, they either say, okay, let's, let's wait until they're finished and then we'll help the business, or we can do the rocky road like we've done and saying, okay, we need to interfere with them now and, and make sure that this is done in a business way. Unfortunately, I've seen too many lean organizations outside uh, in, in, in my career where uh, the lean departments are struggling with the SAP organization, the SAP system. They don't, like Dan said, they're sitting on each side of the river and just looking at each other, and, and this is not bringing us anywhere. So we need to really find a common platform. What I believe and what I think we will be able to do here is by using the Sol 8000, the SAP project, uh, and engaging Lean there, it will furthermore enhance the Lean awareness in our company by bringing some of the techniques into this SAP project, which also will influence heavily on a lot of people's daily work. And also that we will keep developing the organization in regards of the process thinking and the awareness. The most important thing for doing this is I've had for five years now the vision of creating the solar way. The solar way should be describing what we are, how we do things. The first step for us was actually to align lean and the business so that we don't have business and we have lean, but we're bringing these two together. We've done that. The business sees lean as a part of their daily business. That's a great accomplishment. Um, so the next step is now actually to align lean and SAP. And by doing that, we will go for the solar way. I can't put any date on when we'll get there, but uh, we're working heavily on it, and it's our guiding star to get there. So the SAP implementation has um, been going on for quite a while now. Um, there's a lot of preparation going on in the beginning on, of an SAP project, and uh, that's where actually where we started to engage with the SAP people coming to our company. Um, what we did in what I would like to call the first attempt was actually to try to train the SAP experts in Lean. That's a challenge. What we did was uh, show them how Lean works, how we see Lean, and uh, played some of these games we got which we could relate to the IT world. And um, we also did a uh, design review on the blueprint phase of the SAP uh, work being done, where we asked a lot of questions regarding to the design of the processes. So we asked, like, is the process transparent? Is the process, uh, can you control the process? If something goes wrong, is there a pop-up where SAP tells you exactly where the problem is, why it stopped there? Stuff like that. Um, I must admit, we didn't succeed with that. We couldn't get the attention about the needs for doing this. Other people were too busy or they didn't quite get the message. But simultaneously, we're working on helping the first country who would go into the SAP world, which was in uh, Norway. And one of the principles we took with us to Norway to help the organization up there was to create the visuality. The visuality in regards of that, there is a risk if you're running an IT project that a lot of things are hidden in the computer plans, documents, God knows what they can hide in a computer. What we would like to do is bring it into the open and add some of the great elements that we've learned that works for us in the lean world, like having board meetings, where you see, which you see here. Uh, so basically what we did in this program management office was building boards where every team 
had their own board, so they had KPIs, they had plans, they had actions, they had everything in regards of the implementation. The challenge in Norway was that the Norwegian organization had been on the lean journey for approximately three and a half years. And through these three and a half years, we've been training them to think and work in processes. The SAP implementation was coming with the approach that we should implement in silos. So already there was a conflict. And um, we had to accept that this would be an implementation based on the silo thinking. So unfortunately, we also had to make sure that the boards were covering silos like finance, like logistics, God knows what. One of the great things we did in Norway was actually that building an SAP system, you talk about processes, even though you have the silos. And to get the process thinking and, and give them credit for the process thinking, we actually draw a big process wall. That's part of it in this little picture. Imagine a big wall white wall, where we actually ask the business to draw the processes with a pen. So instead of having everything hidden in the computer, we draw the map on a big wall so everybody could go and see it and they could discuss things, the connection between the processes. It also helped us quite a lot during the testing period. Because actually what we did was we marked all the areas where we needed to test when we put some post-its on the wall. So visually it was very strong because every time we tested something, we took the post-it away. And from time to time, you could then see the post-its becoming less and less, which was great for the people so they could see we were doing progress. But unfortunately, the whole implementation in Norway, we couldn't get all the way to the core of the IT implementation like we wanted. It was like a little, there was a little fence around it. We could get our fingers to a certain extent into the area, but that was it. After the implementation of, in Norway, we had a period with reflection and adding all the learnings we've had, and there were quite a lot of learnings. So um, we lean guys, we came again and offered our help again, and saying, well, let us help you. We, we, we think we got the approach that could help us here. So we got the acceptance, we got the full back of, of our board, of our CEO, who is totally behind the lean thinking and, and really embedding it where he can and addressing it where he can, so we got the full support here. So that was also at the time where I actually had to change my job, as Dan referred to, uh, to go from being the lean manager to step into the SAP world and uh, help them from there. And uh, what we did as a starting point was actually to get a common understanding. What are the processes? In the lean world, we had a map. We know exactly how the business was. We had a map showing four processes that could describe the whole business. SAP had a view on how the, the world was, how solar worked, and we needed to align that. So what I did was lock myself up in a room with SAP guys and business guys. And just like electing a pope, we will not come out until we have agreed on this is how the map looks like. This is where SAP and the business can see each other. So that is basically what we did. So um, what we did was actually draw the map for solar. We draw the process map. And of course, the lean guys had to accept some changes. The SAP guys had to accept some changes. But nevertheless, we ended up with a process map, which actually now the business, the lean guys, the SAP guys can say, this is our business. And that was the starting point. It was a good, good starting point for us. Then we agreed on what should the further structure be, because just having the overall process map is not good enough. We would like the complete map so that we really can dig down and see what is beneath each layer. So like an onion, you can peel it up layer by layer and really dig down to where the work is being done, because going out with a map like this wouldn't make sense to all my colleagues. So we needed to really be explicit and be able to tell them what is this about. So what we did was establish several layers, several levels of our documentation of our processes. So we had a level two, which actually is then showing the different main things happening in the processes. We have a level three, which we then beneath every step can see the variances. 
described by a swim lane. And then for each box in the swim lane, there will be an SOP. So that is where we end down to the level of execution. This is where the people do the work. This is where they can see themselves. But there is a system, a structure, which now is totally adapted by the business. This is how we work. This is how we see our landscape. Of course, working with a model like this requires also some new rules and roles. So what we had to define was, yeah, it's good to have a process. We also had that addressed yesterday. It's good to have a process, but who owns the process? What we've done in our company is to appoint for uh, the main processes, to appoint global process owners. This means people who on a global basis own this process. But in each country, there is a local process owner as well. So there are people really close to the operation who can then have the dialogue with the global process owner, what's going on in the business. And we've uh, worked heavily on what are their responsibilities, what do they need to do, what do we expect from them in the uh, different phases that we are in. But we're working, uh, uh, we've done a great job there, I think, in, in regards of setting these frameworks around the process model as such. Another thing we worked heavily on is then to get some structures, framework into the actual work being done in the SAP project. Uh, when I entered it, there was a lot of meetings with no agenda, and the time frame could sometimes go from one hour to two hour, two and a half hour, and for a lean guy, this is frustrating to sit in a meeting where I don't have an agenda, I don't have any KPIs to talk about, I, we just have a chat around the table, and if there's a lot, we have a lot of time, and if there's nothing, we're finished early. So what I said, we need some structures here. And in the subsidiaries, we started working with them based on our great learnings in Norway, where we now actually have established a system where the different teams, which are now process teams, based on our process map. So if you go into our Dutch operation, you will find a team called Order to Cash. Order to Cash is dealing with the process Order to Cash across the business with different functions sitting in it. So there will be salespeople, there will be finance people, there will be logistical people sitting in order to cash. But this order to cash team will then have a startup meeting every morning to align, just like we do in product manufacturing environment, where we look at yesterday's tasks, did we finish them, were there any problems? We also talk about what are today's problems, challenges, tasks we need to do. So there is an alignment in the group and then the group starts working. On a weekly basis, we then have something we call a boardwalk. A boardwalk is uh, something we, we invented to ensure that all the teams are aligned. Because if you don't watch out, you will actually end up having teams where instead of having concrete between the silos, you'll have concrete between the processes. So to ensure that they talk and are aligned about what we're doing, we establish boardwalks. So the teams are visiting or walking from board to board and highlighting special things in their board. The board we're using is actually almost a copy of the Solar Leanway board, which is a standardized board you will find anywhere in our company, but with some twists due to that we are still dealing with an IT area. The main thing, or the biggest issue during the board walks is looking at the KPIs. Are the different teams meeting their KPIs? Secondly, addressing dependencies. Although we're working in main processes, there are dependencies between these big processes. And we need to align it. We need to make sure everybody knows what is the dependency, who's responsible for handling this de dependency, when will it be fixed. So really making sure there is an alignment. Furthermore, we have some boards covering the change management aspect where also Lean had a great influence because we, we are in the Lean program dealing with people in change. We have uh, just started to use the board visualizing around the testing and other things like data migration. This is done then on a weekly basis. 
on a bi-weekly basis, then there is a management meeting, which also has the starting point at the board. So they start visiting the board, addressing the things they need to be aware of at the board, so that we ensure that everybody sees the same thing, we know what the status of the KPIs, and then they can take the decisions from there. And basically what we then have is things being addressed on Wednesday will then at least one week later be addressed in the management meeting if it's needed, and then there will be a bounce back on the coming boardwalk again. So there is a structure about how we handle problems and decisions that needs to be taken and also how it will be communicated. But again, <clears throat> this is done in the subsidiaries. There was still the aspect about core, corporate. How do we deal with them? What we did was actually we brought some people from core down here and learned them what we did here. They could see how it worked. And uh, they could also see how people here were dealing with problems. Dealing with problems in the sense that <clears throat> IT people sometimes, just like any other people as well actually, tend to, if they see a problem, they think they have the solution two seconds afterwards. We trained these dear colleagues of mine to really figuring out what is the real problem. What is the problem you're trying to solve? So we gave them some problem solving tools which we then, of course, then could inspire the others to do at corporate level as well. And <clears throat> that's what we did. <clears throat> we uh, built, started to build a kind of obeyer room uh, to handle the whole implementation so that we could see the whole implementation, the status of the different things at one place in one room at corporate. And we then build the structure around this obeyer room where we then can see how are we progressing, what is the status, so that the very best or the things being addressed in the Netherlands, the Dutch operation, is then actually being mirrored up into the obeyer room so that when we have the weekly meetings in the obeyer room in our headquarter, we can actually see that what is the problem, what are they struggling with, where do they need help. So again, there, there is a connection between what they're doing and how the meeting structure is at corporate. At corporate then, besides the obeyer room, there is also here then on team level, daily meetings about tasks, progress, issues. So we're basically copying what we've done in, in the subsidiaries. Uh, one of the great accom accomplishments of the obeyer room is actually that uh, when I entered the SAP uh, project, they had a status meeting every Friday, and um, they had an agenda, but mainly it was a meeting where we, people were sitting down, and it could take between two and two and a half hours. And I was attending it for, for, for some times, and, and I felt there were no decisions taken, nobody knew what we were going to do afterwards, we just had a chat. Here it's even more concrete, and this now is being done within 45 minutes then we are aligned and we know exactly what to do and we can carry on the work. Progress is being monitored here as well, so you can, if you've got a task, you need to address it here to make sure everybody can see that you are working on it. What we furthermore have done is actually then to involve the business. Because still the issue is SAP guys doing this, so what's the need of the business? Uh, to solve that, we've set up a structure, a follow-up structure, where we actually enhance the different business people to engage in the project because we address issues where we need their input. Uh, one of the good examples we had was actually um, requirements coming in for the template. So how, what changes needed to be done at the template. It used to be that there was an enterprise solution architect that's one hell of a title, but nevertheless. The enterprise solution architect was sitting and getting all these requirements. And on behalf of the business, he was deciding what the business needs and what the business doesn't need. We changed that now. So the business is sitting and getting all the requirements and taking a decision. We need this and we don't need this. And they're giving it to the enterprise solution architect and saying, can you build this? Because this is what we need. So he doesn't, we don't bring him in a situation where he needs to take a decision. 
on behalf of the business. Furthermore, it's about getting back to these roles, the local process owners, the global process owners. They were left a little bit in the vacuum uh, of this whole thing. What do you want me to do? Yes, we got the description, but what does it mean in real life? This structure actually helps them exactly to figure out what we want them to do. In the Netherlands, we carried on working with the visual management. Uh, one of the great things, if you come down there and visit the program management office, is that the whole plan for the implementation is actually on the wall. It's somewhere in the computer, probably. But the plan is on the wall, and the different activities are put up with small notes so that we can see exactly what's happening. And when we're having the boardwalks, we can see the consequence of a delay in one thing. What consequence does it have? If there's a resource problem, we can actually see what consequence does it have if we're moving resources from one activity to another one. Visual management also gives us the possibility to ensure that everybody knows exactly what are the priorities. Because in an SAP project, there are many, many tasks that need to be done. And independently who you ask, they think their task is the most important one that needs to be done. So what we try to do here is also during these boardwalks, creating visual management to ensure that everybody knows exactly what is the priority, why are we doing this, and which ones are parked. We, we, we do that openly. We, know, we show them exactly what is parked and also why it's parked and why we're waiting with that one, why is the other one more important at the current moment. So we ensure by working heavily with the visuality that people know exactly what needs to be done, what is important. We actually focus on the vital few and get them done. Our training approach was also something where from our Norwegian implementation we had great learnings. Um, we have super users who don't feel super. And that's a problem if you have super users who don't feel super. So um, we actually sat down and saying, what is the problem? How can we solve it? So what we come up with was actually a uh, training approach, how we can bring my colleagues into a position where they actually look forward to getting SAP. And, um, what we've done is actually build up a session, uh, a, a training approach built up by four sessions, where session one and two is about understanding what does it mean to work in a process. Create the process awareness. And understand the process model of solar. One thing is showing it on paper, but solar people need to have, have it in their hands, then they got it. So we built some games where they really need to work with the model to get it really a deeper understanding of it. So that is just the warming up. The warming up is also about getting some basic SAP navigation skills. How do I log on? How do I open windows? God knows what they can play with. Session three is then more where we go into the classroom training, the more traditional one, where we will train the different business roles um, according to what they need to do. So what we'll do is present them the swim lanes where they have an active role, and we will show them what tasks they need to work on, what they need to be trained on. That's, again, where the SOP comes into the picture, because we will spend some time training them on the SOPs. But the SOPs is the highway. That's the easy part, actually, of the training. So what we will do is spend a lot of time training the deviations. Every time there's a deviation, how do we get back again on track so that you can serve the customer well, that we ensure that you actually can do your transaction in the right way. The last session we put up is uh, something, again, taken from the lean approach, where we would say, one thing is that we train the different roles. That's good. But what if we brought the whole orchestra together to simulate the processes? So if we say, like today, we would like to have the people working in order to cash sitting in their functions, so we would build up an, uh, an area, training center, and then we would simulate order to cache, and then let people work with it. They could see how are other people doing, who am I actually working together with in this 
process. But also then, if they start feeling comfortable, just like in a flight simulator, you start getting up in the air and then you fly in sunny weather, and then the simulator starts really to give you challenges. That's the same thing we want to do here. We will throw in some scenarios. Now this printer doesn't work. Now you have a problem with this field. How, what are you going to do? How can I avoid workarounds so that we get a stable system? So we're going to build this mobile training center so the training center can move along with the implementation. It will now be built up in the Netherlands. And when we're done there, we will pack it into small boxes and then move to the next country. But that will actually be the end of the whole training. So we really got colleagues who are looking forward to get the SAP system. Furthermore, what we were looking at is uh, actually two things. Go live. It's a scary date that a lot of people have. We have a go live date, yeah. But it's actually after go live the hard work starts. What happens after a go live? Incidents will come into the program management office with a very high frequency. Things not working, things, this is critical, this is critical. It will be a damn hectic period. So what we're working on is creating a model to set some frames, set some rules for the go live period. Uh, one of the tools we will actually do is uh, use the concept of the A3. So every time there's an incident coming in, the IT people really need to write down what is the problem and all the relevant information and then it will be prioritized. So we'll work heavily with a visual management system to deal with this great deal of incidents coming in where we have very, very critical incidents that needs to be fixed immediately. Then we'll have incidents that maybe can hopefully wait a little bit. So we will need to prioritize hard because if we don't prioritize, we not, will not get anything done. And we will, of course, deal a lot with visuality, as I said, in, in that period where we can really also have time to see patterns. Like in Norway, we had uh, 43 branches, all reporting in with incidents. What we try to do there is look for patterns. Is it the same error occurring everywhere? All this kind of stuff. We need to set up some frameworks and rules to help our colleagues in that area. But also, after a go live, when we go to stabilization, and after stabilization, we will need to deal with the issue, how will we work from there? One of the tools we will uh, start working with uh, in that period uh, after stabilization is actually the Kaizen event concept because there will be a lot of processes that need to be fixed. There are a lot of construction places and we need to really go there very fast and make sure that we fix the problems together with the organization. Um, a typical example uh, like from Norway was that we had um, getting a new customer into the system. As a wholesaler, it's damn important to get the customer fast into the system so that he can order our products. After the go live, the problem was it took 10 days to get a new customer into it due to the new system. That's why we need the Kaizen event very fast to get back on track again and make sure that we can serve the customers in our utmost best way. Furthermore, what we're doing before go live, during go live, after go live, is monitoring the processes. The reason for doing this is SAP is unfortunately not good at telling us if something stops. It actually don't tell you anything about it. So what we've done is actually seeing the big processes like big water pipes. And these water pipes I've then built in some hatches where I can open it. Some I open every hour, some I open every day, some opens uh, every week and we monitor how many rocks are lying there blocking the water to flow. This is being done by the people in the process, and this is actually a way of, for us to get control of the processes. And the reason for doing this before go live is actually to find out what is the current state. So we have a baseline, so we can see if things are normal or unnormal. So what we have there is then, depending on the frequency of the different monitoring points, is actually that we then have, if something is in red, <clears throat> we need to find the root cause. 
there must be a root cause. So again, we use systematic problems on to figuring out what is the problem. We then also write what is the corrective action, who's responsible for it, and when will it be done. So we will be able to see the impact on the monitoring points. This has helped us quite a lot. It helps the employees because they're just as insecure about this new system. But this actually shows them, is there a flow or isn't there any flow in, in our processes currently? So this is what we do. And uh, what we've done is actually got an area where we, you can see the monitoring points of all the four main processes at one time. So you can also there look for dependencies. So if something is wrong in order to cache, is that maybe connected to a monitoring point in product lifecycle or God knows what? What have we learned so far? We have a lot of learnings. We, um, even if people say they think in processes, they still have a long way to go. If it gets really tough, they fall back to the silo thinking, and then they start protecting their silos. You have to be very patient when trying to change habits and behavior in the IT area. They are, just like our colleagues in the center warehouses, creatures of habit. And what we're trying to do here is heavily change the way they work, how they see things. We're implementing new things. A lot of people had to leave their comfort zone and try something new. It's also very important that the leaders and managers, they go see. They must walk these processes. They must get an understanding how does it work, which people are influenced by it. And they must support it, and they must be able to communicate to others about the process model. And then the involvement of HR. HR has been very, very important throughout our whole lean journey, because for us, lean is about people and change. So if we go into IT, it's no difference. It's about people. They need to change their habits. And that's where HR can help us with some change management tools. You need to stick to focus on the vital few, even though there are tons of things you need to do. If you're not disciplined, you will not get anything done. And make sure everybody knows the priorities, that everybody sticks to it. And then have a lot of discipline, stick to the plan and to the priorities. We don't want to end up in firefighting or something like that. We need stability and a prerequisite for Stability is discipline. And of course, the most important thing, don't make it an IT project, it's business development. What we will do after this, or continue our journey here, is go, by doing all this stuff, a lot of things has come to the surface. A lot of things we need to work on. And uh, what we need to look at is actually the way we're dealing with the change requests coming into our corporate function now. There are tons of them. There's a long lead time. It's like a black box. Something is coming in, and with a little lock, after one year, you hear something. That is not good enough. Basically, we are still in the foundation of our lean house. We haven't even moved up yet to do anything there. So we're still struggling with the foundation. And uh, we are very, very humble about the challenge of, of trying to change this. But the great thing is the business needs it. And uh, we will help the business where we can because I think that's the main purpose, actually, for lean thinkers to help the business solve their problems. Thank you very much. <laughs>